Hello and welcome to this video. So in this little video here, I'm just going to show you a little bit about this project that I did quite a while ago already. Uh, quite, quite, quite some, I think a couple of years ago actually, but I was still going through my library and I thought I have actually shown this quite a lot around in the early days of Datasmith because it was, uh, well, first of all, I think it's a really interesting project. Let me give you full, full, full credits to uh, Eric Anton from Artifactory Lab, who very, very kindly spent quite a bit of time uh, to uh, tidy everything up in this 3DS Max scene, which was actually created uh, in Corona using and so it was the early days of datasmith and so it was great to be able to test unreal and use a scene from corona uh, and see how basically all these great 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 materials that eric uh, extremely talented artist uh, from artifactory lab uh, created so in fact i would just like to point out here what we're looking at uh, the uh, materials came through and i think it's called um, yeah so there's different we've got the site and we have the buildings and so on but here if we look at these fixtures and the materials just in passing look at how uh, harmonious this material library is and very 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 subtle differences between the greys and the whites and the blacks and a very very large uh, range and I have always noted that in Eric's material library that they uh, just looking at the material library it looks um, already full of very subtle um, material of very subtle differences and everything kind of looks harmonious so it's a small thing, but uh, I thought it might be worth pointing out. Okay, so basically this scene was uh, created again in Corona, and the architect is a very well-known well -known architect called Christian Kerez from Switzerland. He's been published in Domus, a very respected architectural magazine and publication uh, that has been growing going for for many 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 years very res well respected and his work is uh, beautiful like a lot of the work that eric does from uh, very uh, very high-end architects so a couple few um tips and tricks that we kind of got from here one of which that you can see here we have this sort of um, moire effect here which is rather undesirable and it's due to the fact that the there we have these grills here so these grills were actually modeled in the original model and imported like this so we did have some problems with this because there were some tiny little screws here, some um, semi-spheres that were uh, very high poly and that created a lot of problems because we didn't notice and obviously in 3ds Max that didn't kind of um, create a problem but while when we imported it in Unreal in fact here you see these bars are red when i hide the show the light maps and there's a lot of red everywhere but specifically these and it created um some problems in the scene so if you do have to do this i think it would be very much a case of doing an lod level of detail which is not necessarily always that easy and one good idea would be to use a texture map instead of um, having the mesh which obviously um, may not quite look quite as good as this when you're close up so that's where a case of doing LOD however the very very quick and dirty solution that I want to show you especially now that we have powerful machines is to change the screen percentage here so if we go to our view options and we go to screen percentage put that onto 200% and although my um, uh, viewport frame rate has drastically dropped if we need to do an animation pre-rendered or uh, well to do pre-rendered animation this would definitely help alleviate the program problem and get rid of it completely 
So again, um, the, what I tend to talk about here is really how the materials have completely come through thanks to Datasmith. There was practically nothing uh, that I had to do in order to, um, to well, at least get all these wonderful textures that uh, Eric has worked on. And we also um, played around with the, the lighting here. So this was a little bit of... Uh, experimentation for me when how to create a good lighting solution yet um, still have the sun that we have set on uh, on dynamic here so that we can play with the uh, the dappled shadow effect of the tree outside so this tree I have to say was created by uh, Ruyuta a friend from uh, from from Paris as well, who's a very very uh, talented creating trees in GrowFX, and so this was our first attempt to do or try and do something for Unreal. So the the uh, the outside is very very simple. In fact, we didn't really push it very much on the outside, and I didn't have uh, much of a grass here. So that's only just a texture. So in terms of the lighting here, if we go to lit lighting only mode so we can see i'll go through the glass here that uh, the unwrap was kind of uh, done very very um, efficiently in i think it was uh, using done in 3ds max prior this time but uh, the um, the light map resolution was pushed uh, quite quite hard here and light maps were quite quite heavy but the result is worth it here if i hide the uh, the scene the the gizmos we have um uh, the uh, the texture maps that come quite well and then if we have we go into the detail lighting mode we have uh, well there isn't much reflection but we can see kind of showing the the texture so again there was not much to do here other than play with the lighting and the atmosphere because all the uh, materials came through in datasmith i'll walk around a little bit there showing you it's very very minimal architecture but uh, i really like i really like this i think it's very uh, solemn and um, beautifully proportioned so the thing that worked really, really well also is this kind of concrete area here uh, shown behind the glass. And I think you'll agree that the effects of the lighting was very, very encouraging. And uh, uh, the softness of the shadows is, is kind of uh, very, very convincing here. So, um, so yeah, so there you go. Just a little introduction here for the scene. Again, this was really much of a test uh, to use Datasmith. I'll just show you a little bit of these lights, which were using the uh, volumetric fog here. And you can see that they just they react almost in real time as I'm moving them around. And uh, this kind of, so if I, you can see the, uh, the shaft of light here. So a quick tip here, if you want to have this kind of effect, is to increase the uh, volumetric scattering intensity that we have here. So you see, if I bring it back to the default of one, uh, you'll see that we can't see very much of a shaft of light here. So I tend to increase the volumetric scattering intensity um, with, of course, with our exponential height fog uh, here with the volumetric fog enabled. But apart from that, really not much has changed. I can see I did change a few settings, but it should kind of work really out of the box if you um, increase this this setting here, the volumetric scattering intensity. And again, here we have a little bit of flickering in the distance. So this is kind of due basically to the fact that Unreal has not got the capacity to um, sample sub pixels. So here, as these elements become smaller than a pixel, uh, the anti-aliasing is not uh, working very well. So this is a, a problem that is um, likely to come up fairly, um, fairly often. I think as we work with architectural elements, which are going to be uh, perfectly straight, uh, perfectly vertical, or perfectly horizontal. So it's one to to look out for, perhaps in the future in uh, your presentations, whether you want to use a texture map uh, 
which will have a mipmap as a, as an LOD. So I know it's a little bit more of a setup, but if you're using this kind of effects, uh, this kind of asset in your uh, in your scenes, then it might be well worth the uh, the little bit of investment. Okay, so we'll treat that maybe again in another video, but here I wanted to show you a little bit this great project that I've shown around for quite a while, but didn't uh, didn't make a video about. So thank you, Eric, for the scene, and um, I'll see you next time.